Okay, so we're going to use Idris to write a Monoid instance, but we're going to do something interesting, and that is to verify uh, the Monoid instance uh, upholds its laws. So we'll start off with a um, we'll start off with a module called Verified Options. So we're going to create a, a data type called Option. So Idris has got a type uh, isomorphic to this called Maybe. But we're going to create our own just so that we don't conflict with the uh, uh, so we can define instances and not conflict with anything uh, in the standard library. Um, so people familiar with uh, ML or Scala will probably be more familiar with the option name anyway. Um, so given this option type, uh, we can define um, there's a, there's a couple of possible instances that we could define uh, for semigroup, but I'm going to define what I think is the most useful, the one that I've used the most, uh, which is if the inner type has got a semigroup then we can define a semigroup for that option. And that is, so given sum of something plus sum of some other thing, then we just add the inner things together. So given sum of hello and sum of world, we should get sum hello world. So none will just give us the other thing, and in any other case, we get uh, the first thing. Uh, so that will only be in the case of none, but in Idris it's better to leave uh, the, the cases off when we can, um, uh, if we can get the same result, and that's because uh, Idris, uh, we will, Idris won't require us to pattern match when we go to prove things. Uh, you can, if you want to, uh, put none in there and see how you go with uh, proving the same thing. Uh, it's a good exercise to do. So given uh, so, so what we have done is uh, defined a um, uh, defined uh, the the append operation for a semigroup, and the append operation has this law called associativity. There we go. Uh, so associativity says that a plus b plus c should equal a plus b plus c. So uh, it's basically saying that the um, uh, uh, parentheses don't don't matter. Um, the order of parentheses don't matter. Uh, we can uh, we can evaluate e either one first and get the same result. Um, so in Haskell, what we do to uh, try and uh, assert this property would be to make a something called a property-based test using quick check, or in Scala we'd use Scala check. Um, and try 100 uh, different values for A, 100 different values for B, 100 different values for C. Uh, we'll just try it out and assert that uh, adding uh, the you know 100 different values for A and 100 different values for B plus 100 different values for C is equal to uh, the, the the other way around. Um, so this will give us some sort of uh, confidence in that um, in that the law holds. In that uh, if we define something that actually generates um, all possible values then uh, it should test uh, 100 values randomly and uh, assuming like a good distribution of that, of that randomness then uh, we get like kind of good coverage. Um, but the thing is that it's only testing 100 cases um, that you know we only get a confidence of, of 100 uh, of 100 trials per, te per test run. Um, plus it's not even it's not um, uh, uh, we, we can have an error in the generator that doesn't generate a good sampling. Um, uh, or we could just always be lucky for all, we could have we could run it ten times and still be lucky and not uh, find a case where this where the implementation um, uh, has an error um, and also it's just not a constructive proof that that what we've done uh, does the right thing uh, so I think we can do better and interest allows us to do better but let's first define uh, uh, let's, let's finish off defining the monoid since we've only defined the semigroup so Given the semi-group, we should also be able to find a monoid. And here we've got this thing called neutral, uh, also known as the zero element or the identity element. Um, and that will be none in this case. Uh, and this has a, this has two laws, the identity laws. And these are the left identity law, which says that neutral plus an element equals that element. Or that element plus the neutral element equals that element. Okay, so we should 
be able to, uh, you know, instead of writing quick check for it, we should be able to verify that this, uh, that these laws hold for all values, not just a hundred values that we try, and not just a thousand values that we try. Uh, it should hold for all values, uh, and I want to verify that. So, uh, Idris has got this um, uh, this uh, type class called um, verified semi group. And by implementing this, we have to define uh, we have to define um, uh, an operation, and that operation will be a proof. So let's load it up. I can't remember the name for it. So we'll get Idris to tell us what the what the name is. So it's called this semi group op is associative. And if we look at the type, uh, so we will take an option A, an option A, an option A. So left, right, uh, left, center, and right. Um, and then we'll have to give this thing, uh, th th this return type. Now what's interesting is that this return type uses this equal sign. So let's get some docs for this. So, uh, so this equals is actually a data type. So it's a type uh, that takes uh, t uh, two values uh, and gives us, um, uh, well, is a type that, that, that just takes two values. Uh, what's interesting though is that it's only got one constructor called refl. Uh, so this must be like a reflexive equality. Um, and it takes a value and then the same value on the right hand side. Uh, so it, so refl uh, can take, uh, can be a uh, inhabitant of any uh, value as long as the value is the same on both sides. So to give this a try, let's say v1 equals 1 and give it refl. So V is like the identity uh, function, except we can actually give a specific type. So this is actually the type. 1 equals 1 is a type. Uh, and REFL is, is uh, a value of that type. So Idris is able to see that uh, the left-hand side and the right-hand side uh, are the same value by saying that they're, uh, you know, they're, actually, the same, um, they're actually the same syntactically. Um, and so it can, it can make that as a type, and REFL actually implements that. If we were to say 1 plus 1 equals 2 and give it REFL, well, Idris uh, evaluates the left hand side, so 1 plus 1, it evaluates that, uh, and it can see again that those are syntactically the same thing. So REFL is, a, is a, a value of that. Now, if we were to say 1 equals 2, give it REFL, we'll get a compile error. It isn't able to make those things syntactically the same. Um, well, because they aren't the same thing at all. Um, and so it can't make, yeah, it can't turn that into x equals x. So going back to our, uh, to, to the thing that we have to implement called our semigroup is associative. Uh, let's paste that in here. So it takes an option, uh, takes three options, uh, and then gives us, uh, then we have to eventually make it into uh, some sort of REFL uh, value somehow. Uh, so you can see that these syntactically aren't the same, same thing, because uh, we have the parentheses on the right-hand side here, and we don't have the parentheses at all on this side because they're the, theoretically around the L plus C. Uh, so we have to make those things uh, the same somehow. Now, uh, we'll start off with the uh, most obvious one, which is that sum A plus sum B plus sum C equals something. Uh, I'll say this is sum sum sum. Now, what's interesting is that uh, to prove that this option is of uh, that the semigroup for this option is verified, we'll actually probably need that the A, B, and C uh, 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 semigroup. Uh, so this is semigroup of A. The uh, the inner uh, value semigroup is also uh, verified. Uh, that we know that is that is associative. So I'm just going to put a verified up here uh, so that we can reuse a proof. Uh, later on, but I'm just I'm gonna put the th this question mark means that we're going to delay uh, solving it uh, until later. We'll provide a, a proof later on. I'm just gonna fill in the rest here. So if we give it uh, two sums and a none, uh, that will be the same. We'll assert that the, the, the syntactically the same, and that is because if we take uh, sum of something, sum a. plus sum b plus uh, none. Well, that's the same as sum a plus sum b plus none. Because if we look above, the none gets dropped. 
So if we were to run uh, this plus operation, if we asked Idris to reduce it for us, it would just drop the nuns off, just because of our definition. And now we can see that syntactically, they are the same. So Idris is able to do this uh, because we've done some pattern matching. So Idris is able to do that and we can just supply our REFL uh, to say uh, that those are the same values. And the rest of them, uh, the rest of the cases will be if it's none there, we can use just use leave underscore because it doesn't matter. If we have a none there, then we know that the um, that the uh, that the uh, right hand side uh, uh, will be reduced as well. Um, and if we have a none case, then that will be the same as well because uh, none will get erased. So we'll just have these two on the, we'll just have these two left. We'll just have them as underscores, but we'll have those two left. And they're obviously uh, going to be the same uh, when that gets erased. So the only interesting one that we have to solve is the case where they're, uh, where we, where they're all sums. So Idris has got this really cool uh, interactive proof mode. So we'll load up the, uh, we'll load up the file again. And it will say that this meta, we have this meta variable to solve. Uh, so if we say prove that, we've got this interactive proof mode. Uh, so this is one big lambda. Our goal is to solve this one big lambda. Uh, if we write intros, it'll take the arguments from that lambda and could bring them into scope. And our goal will become uh, the output of that uh, of that lambda, which is just an equality type. So we have to prove the equality between uh, some of uh, this and some of uh, this. So uh, what's interesting is that because we've brought the uh, we have a semi group uh, verified semi group uh, of A because we realize that A plus B plus C we're going to have to prove uh, we're going to have to need a proof for that um, <coughs> we have that in scope so what we can do is actually rewrite the right hand side here with the left hand side of the uh, of the verified group that we already have verified semi group that we already have so we can say rewrite the right hand side with uh, the operation of the inner type given a, a b c so that rewrote the right hand side here so you can see up here it's a plus b plus c and here it's a plus b plus c together so now if we look at it so we've rewritten it with the left hand side of uh of the uh of a plus b plus c so we've we've used the uh the verified semi group that we had in scope as a constraint uh from writing the verified semi group uh for the, for the option, um, we've rewritten uh, the, the right-hand side with that, and now we can see that they're syntactically the same thing. Uh, so Idris allows us to say that this is now a trivial case. Idris will reply back saying that we've got no more goals to solve. So that lets us say QED, we've finished our proof. And Idris will give us the, uh, the uh, something that we can just copy and paste into our, uh, into our source file. I'm gonna get Idris to do that for us because I'm a bit lazy. Uh, so now Idris has added that to the bottom of the file here, and uh, it's added the module uh, name as the uh, uh, it's qualified it with the module name. I'm just going to delete that because I don't like that there, and that makes it a little bit easier. So we've had uh, we have this uh, we're asking we're saying that we're going to provide this proof uh, later. Some 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 here. And Idris has given us the proof for some, some, some through this interactive rewriting. Um, and yeah, we're just using the inner verified semi group, this one, uh, to rewrite the, uh, the, uh, the, the term so that they look the same. And we can say trivial, which is, uh, which is how we get them to be the same thing on, the, on both sides uh, and have a proof that we've got these things to be equal. So it just helped us out a lot there. And now what we're going to do is um, define our verified monoid instead of a semigroup for this option. And if we were to load this up, we'll get to, uh, Idris will tell us that we need to define this. And we need to define this. So was saying so this must be the two uh, identity laws that I wrote above. So let's ask for the types. So Idris is saying uh, given some sort of uh, given some option of A, 
And that option of A plus the neutral element, none, equals uh, that option of A. Um, so we'll just pat match. So if we give it sum, well, sum plus none equals sum. And Idris is able to, Idris knows that the neutral element is none, so uh, doing the plus operation with none on the right hand side always equals the first thing, so that will just reduce to L equals L, or sum equals sum. So we can say that's reflexively equal. If we have none, well, none plus none equals none. That's obvious as well. So we can say refl, and for the right hand side, I'm sure we can just do the same thing. And now if we were to clear this and load it back up, we can see that touch act. So we've just proven that uh, the monoid laws, so the uh, the associativity law for the semigroup and the uh, two identity laws hold for the option monoid that we've just defined. Uh, so we don't have to rely on quick check, we don't have to run in generators for option. Uh, we, we've just constructively proven that uh, the mono that we've defined uh, will always uh, ho uphold these laws. Not up uphold them for the hundred that we try, not uphold them for the thousand that we try. We don't have to write a generator, we don't have to do anything like that. Uh, just by pattern matching and uh, using this, uh, using the propositional equality that Idris provides, we've proven that for all values of option A, uh, the mono that we've defined uh, upholds its laws.